This week on Transworld Sport, we maul our rivals once again as we discover Americans giving rugby a try. We've got tickets to the hottest gig in town. If you're interested in going on the pool. And what can be more attractive than four legs, a tail, and a big wet nose? Of course, you can go fly a kite if you find all that a bit of a drag. But don't get too excited, it can be bad for your health. And talking about bad for your health, we conclude our report from the toughest race on Earth. It's easy. <laughs> but first, a look at the sports news headlines worldwide. Through the ages, man has been rendered powerless by the merciless might of the world's oceans. The sea's abysmal depths have always and continue to serve as a boundless graveyard for souls and vessels alike. And danger, tragedy and heroism will always be a part of the fabric of seafaring communities. This holds especially true for the Isles of Scilly, 25 miles off the southwest tip of Britain, whose waters are renowned for their treachery. And among the Isles' many maritime traditions, the pilot gig takes pride of place. These gigs would take pilots out to approaching ships to steer them safely to their destination. It was a lucrative business, and many gigs would race out to get their pilot aboard first. So, gig racing was born. More recently, enthusiasts revived the traditions, and in 1990, the World Pilot Gig Championships were inaugurated. It started in my father-in-law's lounge, and uh, we were talking about gigs, and he suggested, oh, we ought to have a World Championships. And it, it grew from then. Um, the first championships we had, we had 19 gigs, and at the moment, we're looking at nearly 70 today. In 1990, the title World Championships was perhaps a little tongue-in-cheek, since all 19 boats were local gigs. But today, gigs from the Netherlands, Ireland and the Faroe Islands are competing, and next year a team is expected from Australia. The Dutch are particularly keen participants. Gig rowing adds the uh, better competition element to it, since all the gigs are the same, or supposedly the same. In slopes and, uh, and whalers and lifeboats, you, you would handicap the slip. Whereas here, it's really the best team who wins and not the one who has the best boat. And so, to find the best team, Contesting the men's event are 70 teams of six plus a cox. Rowing a gig, built of elm planks to standard specifications, is a skill which requires special teamwork and technique, as well as sheer brute strength. The oarsmen row almost diagonally to power the gig smoothly through the waves. The cox steers a course to make best use of the currents and winds. Women have a long tradition in gig rowing. They've been competing since the championships began, and this year 63 teams have entered the women's event. Both men and women race through a series of heats and qualifiers to determine the strongest crews. Going into the women's final, the home crowd were optimistic about the chances of the local gigs, especially Tregarthens. Following the heats in the men's competition, all eyes were on the winners here for the past five years, the Cornish team from Carradon, and their gig, Mary Newman. It's just something we work very hard for. Uh, it's a big event, it's the premier event, so we're putting a lot of training for it. 
and uh, we've had a lot of luck here. Do well. And so to the women's final, from Nut Rock to St Mary's Quay, a relative sprint of one and a half miles. The Dutch defending champions with their gig Neptunus showed strongly, but urged on by their home crowd, Tregarthens kept up the pace. And it was Tregarthens who triumphed by the narrowest of margins, the first time a Silonian crew has won the women's title since 1992. The gig Neptunus featured again in the men's final and the Dutch were joined by the St. Patrick's Rowing Club from Dublin, crewing the Spirit of Rain to give the race a really international feel. But it was the Cornish crews that were to dominate the race. The Mary Newman is named after a formidable Victorian oarswoman and her crew lived up to their predecessor's reputation as they powered to a sixth consecutive title. Another Cornish crew from Roseland and Kiligaran were second, while Neptunus managed to take third. What would you expect at a traditional event like this, other than a traditional form of victory celebration? <laughs> now for our final look at this week's sports news headlines. Rugby Union 